Hello, my name is Victor Eman, and welcome to this first part in the series of two. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how I created the details for the AKS74U using Endo2 as well as showing you my workflow with Endo2. In the next part, I'll be going over how I created the textures using Dedo. The details I'll be adding using these techniques can be created using, for example, floaters and baking. But creating details in Endo2 allows me to quickly and non destructively edit, add, or remove directly in Photoshop without having to go back and rebake. In this tutorial, I'll be going over these things. How to bake and set up your normal map for Endo2. Create a basic normal detail and how to kit bash. Creating details using shapes, text, and how we can use the sculpting feature. How to create a realistic normal detail from a photo. A neat way to add bumps and dents without the use of a 3D sculpting software. Adding the final touches and converting your detailed normal map to an ambient occlusion map. In this part, we'll go over preparing for bake with XNormal, baking AO and normal map, and setting up your normal map for Endo2. Alright, so what you see here is the high poly model I'm going to be using to um, uh, bake to my low poly. And as you can see, it's uh, got quite... it's quite naked. It doesn't have a lot of details. And um, it's a very simple, simple model, mainly just shapes and bevels and so on. And um, that's what I'm going to be using Endo2 for. So I'm going to be adding some bolts, screws, um, dents. I'm uh, going to be adding a pattern to the, um, to the grip back here and some stripes here to the um, uh, clip. And uh, yeah, just add a whole bunch of different details. I'm also going to be using the uh, Endo2's photo generation um, uh, tool to, to turn this handle into a wooden handle. Uh, but the first thing I need to do is to bake this down to a low poly model, and I'll um, I'll see you soon. So this here is the low poly model that I'm going to be baking the uh, normal map to, and uh, it's not super low poly. It's got I think it's 10k no uh, 9k triangles, um, but I think it's going to be working pretty well. So the tool I'm going to be using to bake the normals is called XNormal, which I went over quite a bit in the uh, in the previous tutorial I did on uh, Dedo. But I'm going to be showing you the basics for it uh, for this example as well. And the only thing you need to make sure you uh, you do before that is of of course building low poly and as well as um, as UV mapping. So just make sure everything fits and um, use as much space as you can to um, avoid uh, wasting um, precious pixels. So when this is done, I um, always go into Mesh and triangulate it. Then I go to File, Export Selection and choose OBJ. Type in the name, I just have to browse to the correct folder first. And I'll name this Tutorial Bakes and I'll name this Low Poly. Alright, so let's just undo the triangulation and um, I'll see you in XNormal. Okay, so I have my um, uh, version of XNormal booted and um, so yeah, this is the first thing you're gonna see. Uh, on the left side here, you can see how much RAM is being used by, um, or how much RAM is free, and you want you can enable or disable sounds and so on. So to get started, you first have to load a high definition mesh, which I actually haven't done. So I'll go back into Maya, quickly put my get my high poly up here, and I'll smooth it to two division levels. Select all of it and export selection. And I'll save it in the same folder as high poly. And let's just wait for it to um, finish exporting. There we go. And just undo the smoothing. All right, so back into X normal. I simply right click here in this field. Choose add meshes. Take the high poly. And I'll take the low poly. Oops, took the wrong one actually. Go back here. Add meshes, tutorial bakes, high poly, and the low poly. 
And one good thing you can do here is you can build something that's called blockers. Uh, this is really handy if you don't explode your meshes, like for in this example, I just built basically a cage around everything, so all of this is just one mesh, basically. And the way blockers work is, let me see if I can find the ones I did before here. Yep, here they are. So basically it's just planes that you put in between uh, areas, tight spaces. So this surface here will not pick up uh, what's behind this blocker above and the other way around as well. So the parts above here won't pick up the surfaces below here. So just place these uh, in tight spaces and um, once that's done, I can export them uh, by going into file and export selection and save them as, for example, blockers. Then back into XNormal, right click in the empty area here and browse, let's see here, browse blockers file. I'll do like this. So now it's in here. I think you, you can see it. There we go, yeah, Block, blockers file. And you can see which one is being used. So once this has been set up, uh, you go into bacon options. And up here is where you output the file, the maps. And I'll set this to Tutorial Bakes, and save it as, uh, let's see, um, Tutorial Bake. Um, yeah, that should do it. So the way XNormal works is you set the actual project name, and uh, XNormal is going to add a suffix itself. So it's going to add a dash, and uh, if you choose Normal, or uh, Normal, for example, it's going to add Normals afterwards. And the same thing goes for height map and all the other maps um, that you can choose here. So just worry about the actual project name. Next, you can set the size. Uh, I'm going to be working quite high uh, resolution, so I'm setting it to 4K, 4096, 4096. And I'll check the normal map first. And I'll go into the options here, the green box, and make sure it's set to tangent space. Because if you disable this, it's going to make an object space map. And just make sure all the uh, coordinates are set to positive, because this is the way um, uh, Dido likes to work. And I'll set the anti-aliasing to four times. And I also want the file overwrite warning, so that I don't overwrite anything by mistake, which which you can do if you choose object space here, um, because it gets it gets the same suffix. Um, so yeah, once that's done. All you need to do is press Generate Maps, and it's going to load your uh, OBJs and uh, generate a map for you. Okay, so it's just saving up the TGA. And it looks like the bake came out uh, pretty clean. So let's go back into Maya, or whatever program you're using. And I'll create a new material, make it a blin. And I'll simply plug in the normal map here to see how it looks. And make sure you change the um, the use as to tangent space. And tutorial bake normals. Here's the suffix that I was talking about before. I'll apply it. And there we go. So yeah, came out super clean. Okay, so next, I'll just close this down. I'll need to bake an object space normal map. So I'll um, de uh, uncheck the tangent space option. And I'll also check ambient occlusion. Um, so yeah, I'll um, generate this and I'll um, see you in Photoshop. In this part, I'll show you how to create a simple detail and modify it, introduce you to the UI, and kit bashing with Endo 2. So here we are in Photoshop, and these are this is the image occlusion I just baked, and as you can see, it's um, it doesn't have a lot of details, but we're gonna change this because uh, once we're done in Endo 2, we're gonna be creating an um, image occlusion map which will combine with this one. And as you can see here, we have our normal map bake, and it's quite high resolution. It's um, uh, 4K. 
And this is, I'm gonna be using this as a base for Endo 2, which I'll boot now. So what I'll do now is I'll quickly create a detail and then I'll break it down uh, for you. There we go. All right, so in order to be able to use this as a base for our new normal details, we need to go to Mix and Normal to Endo 2. And as you can see, the layer structure on the right side here changed. And now we can just add layers, we can uh, create selections, we can add details just like, uh, just like a, a normal Endo 2 document. So the uh, first thing I'm gonna do uh, is to add some details to the lower receiver part. So I have a ref reference photo here. So I'll be create like one of each kind, which uh, I'll kind of use uh, as a kit bash. So I'll zoom in here and make sure I'm on the right side, which I am indeed. And I'll start off by creating the this uh, iron one or the brighter one which looks uh, pretty flat and low and um, pretty basic. So I'll create a new layer and I'll just zoom in. So what I'll do now is I'll simply demonstrate how easy it is to create a simple detail such as this bolt. And I will then move on to explaining the settings and different parameters more in depth. And if I move over my mouse over into two, you're gonna see convert selection to normal. So if I click here, it's gonna do some operations and there we go, we have a screw or bolt. It's a bit too, uh, it has a bit too much depth, I think. So I'm gonna try and change to outer and there we go. Increase the softness a bit. I'm gonna try stroke outer instead or stroke emboss because I want some sort of uh, softness to it. Actually it's, yeah, it's still a bit too has a bit too much depth. I'm gonna drag this down a bit. There we go. And I'm gonna preview this by clicking the um, preview button at the bottom right here. So it's really easy to create and modify a detail like this. And um, as you can see here, there's a bunch of different settings and parameters you can tweak. And I'll do my best to explain them to you now. The first and one of the most important buttons here is a zip button. By pressing this, you do not only minimize the file size of your PSD, but it also optimizes loading times. And the best part is that it's non-destructive, so you can at any time go back to the detail and make changes. If you make any changes to the zip detail, it will automatically unzip, so you should definitely make a habit of using it when you work with Endo 2. Uh, next button is uh, Sculpt, which you can use to as the title is uh, says you can sculpt details. You can, um, I can go in here and show you actually. So I click on this and it uh, changes a little bit. I'll use the brush tool with a, a white color and I can go in here and just draw shapes. And once I'm happy with that, I can go out of sculpt mode and we have a normal. But I don't want that, so I'm gonna undo. And another thing that's really good uh, to save, um, to uh, optimize performance is that you can select this and you can alt drag and you have a new one in the same uh, layer, um, layer structure. So instead of duplicating the, uh, the uh, group or detail, you can just go in as, as into sculpt mode and move it, create a copy of it. But let's leave it like this. Next one is shape. Is different bevel types. I usually go with the uh, smooth. Um, the other ones are really good too, but uh, it's, uh, it's just my habit of using smooth uh, most of the times. Next one is the bevel type. There's inner, outer, emboss, groove, stroke inner, stroke outer, and stroke emboss. And I demonstrated this just before to um, try out the different looks and uh, make it sharper, make it uh, more deep and so on. And the next one is called slant. And this is where you decide if the uh, shape should go up or down. So if I move this or uh, uh, toggle these on and off, you can see that it uh, changes. I can also preview this in the um, with the previewer and change it to up. And there we go. And I want it to be up. Turn off the previewer again. 
Next one is curve. And yeah, it's, it's a curve. It changes how the uh, bevel is uh, performed. You can create some really, really interesting results using these. But for now, for this, I'll use the linear one, the default one. And the last one here in the top row is blend. And it's just like it sounds, it's um, where you change the blending mode. I usually go with um, overlay, which is the most uh, basic one. So if I move this around, uh, you can see it, uh, it just overlays on the underlying uh, details. So just move this back here. And down here, we have a bunch of different uh, variables or parameters. Uh, size, it's the size of the bevel, which I'll leave at one for now. Next one is depth, and it's just like it sounds. It adjusts the depth of the, um, of the detail. Next, contrast, it's, again, just like it sounds, it, incre it increases or decreases the contrast. And the next one is quite interesting. It's uh, opacity. It's very similar to contrast, but it increases or decreases the op actual opacity. So if I move this over here, kind of similar to the overlay, you, you can see the underlying details um, through it. But if I reduce the contrast instead, it doesn't. You can't see the um, underlying details through it because you just reduce the contrast instead of the opacity of it. So I'll take this up again and move it over here. Next, softness, just like I demonstrated before, is you can make it softer or harder. And next are a bunch of different uh, parameters that I'm gonna be demonstrating later on in this, um, in this video. So for now, I'm just gonna uh, add some more types of uh, bolts. Next, I'm gonna be adding a bolt that, like a more round soft bolt. And I'll make a solid this time. And as you can see here, it says convert solid. This is the icon for solid or brush actually to normal. So I click this. And in order to make this round, I usually go about this by increasing the size quite a bit. Like so maybe. And then I increase the softness. Might decrease the size a little bit or increase it. There we go. Let's preview and see how it looks. That looks pretty good. All right, so close this down again. And I'll decrease the contrast a little bit to around 80%, 75 maybe. There we go. And actually, I'll go back to the previous one and zip it just for a good measure. And same with this one, because I'm done with this. There we go. All right, so let's see what more kinds of uh, bolts there are. So we have the uh, short one and we have the, um, the round one. Next, I'm noticing we have these uh, really, really, really subtle um, kind of indents. And uh, so I'll use a, this time I'll demonstrate how you can work using brushes instead. So I'm gonna select a hard brush and make it about the same size as these ones. And I'll click one out here. And just like before, it says brush to normal. So there are many ways to, uh, that you can create, um, create normals. And I'll be demonstrating uh, a few more uh, later on in, in this video. But these three um, um, types are the most common ones. Selection, solids, and brushes. So, um, as you can see here on the photo, it goes in, not out. So I'll go in here to Endo 2 and change the slant to down. I'll convert it to outer and reduce the depth a little bit. Also increase the softness. And let's preview. There we go. I also change the blend mode to overlay. 
and same with the previous one. There we go. And I'll zip for good measure. Okay, so I think those are the only three kinds of bolts. Or actually, here is one more. The one that's being used here, up here on the site, and a small version of it uh, here as well. So let's see how, how we can go about creating this. I'll create a new layer, use the brush, and convert it. And now I'm going to go into Sculpt mode and use the eraser tool. Make sure it's a hard brush and I'll just decrease the size a bit. A bit too small, a bit too big I mean. It's pretty good. Might increase the size to two or three. There we go. And go out of Sculpt mode so we can preview it. Is good. All right, so we have our kit uh, of bolts. So I'll just move these, uh, move this down here, so we can just uh, grab these whenever we need need them, and just find a better space to um, place them. There we go, and there we go, and this one. And the last one. So here are our, our bolts. So I'll just uh, make sure to name them properly. So this one, I'll name this low bolt. Next one. Oh yeah, I can also toggle the um, opa um, visibility here uh, directly in Endo 2. And you can also go to layer below, layer above, and navigate through the layers this way, and also go to pa and layer parent. So if I'm like in here doing something for some reason, I can just click here and I go to the um, layers parent. Uh, this one was the round bolt, so I'll name this round bolt. And yeah, for good measure, I'll use this one instead. This is the subtle, I don't know, indent, maybe. And then the next one was that one. I'll name this, oh, I don't know, hollow bolt. Just so I know, um, don't have to toggle the visibility to see which one is which. All right, so now we have our bolts. I'll just go ahead and start placing them around. So to make the placement a bit easier, I'm gonna I'm gonna be opening up the uh, previewer, and um, here we can actually plug in our own custom mesh by right clicking. So the easiest way to get this uh, working is to um, go to your th 3D application of choice and um, select your mesh, go to File, then Export Selection, and choose FBX. Then here, under Geometry, you have to make sure Tangents and Binormals is checked and that Triangulate is checked as well. Next is Browse to the folder that you want to save it to. And I'll name mine uh, Previewer Mesh. There we go. So back into Photoshop, right click on your Previewer, Load Custom Mesh. And there we go. All right. So, I'm gonna make this a bit smaller. Let's open up the reference photo. So the first bolt is supposed to be down here. So I'll just take the low bolt, go into sculpt mode, select it, and just alt drag it to where I want it. Somewhere around here. And let's go out of sculpt mode and let's see if it's in the um, right place. There we go. All right, so let's continue continue doing this for the rest of the bolts. Uh, 
and below here I think yeah by the trigger and around this one as well over here and yep there's one above it as well around here all right so let's go out of sculpt mode and preview there we go okay so the next bolt I want to bolt type I want to uh, um, add is the rounded one so I'll select a round bolt go to sculpt mode just like before And there we go just alt drag it to around here I think it was yep there and the next one is somewhere over here and then there's two of them up here deselect and go out of sculpt mode there we go Okay, so now let's do the um, very subtle indents. We're just going up one level or up one layer. Go to sculpt mode. And the same procedure here as well. Oops, just gotta maximize. There we go. All right, so let's go down here and select this one. And I think they're, yep, just above these ones. Let's see, actually, I think mine are too big, so I'll just place them a bit more randomly, like so. And let's place two here as well. I'll select this one and move this one back around here. And let's see how this looks. Perfect. Okay, so now it's time for the last bolt, which are uh, these with the uh, hole in the middle. So you just need to find the um, proper place to put put it. I'll start off by going into the layer and go to sculpt mode. And then I just need to find, yeah, just find the um, place in the UVs where it's supposed to be. I think it's up here somewhere. Might be wrong. Let's see. Yep, it's over here. Okay, so just select it. Move it where you want it. Around there somewhere. And as well as over here, just the other side of it. Oops. Made too many copies. There we go. And there were two more areas. It was up on the um, on the scope or sight. I mean, sorry. So let's just try and find that one as well. And there it is, or at least one of them. Move it up here. And it's supposed to be a little bit smaller. Just get it down slightly. Like so. And there is one a small detail here. And I'll try and place this over. There we go. Perfect. Go out of sculpt mode and preview. Awesome. All 
Right, so let's see what else. Okay. So I'm gonna start adding the bolts to the other side as well. Um, which, let's see here, over here. So I'll just turn it around and I'll start adding details here as well. basic bolts. So now we've got some more interesting shapes to um, add. For example, the um, these uh, crosses here and um, some... Uh, we're gonna add some sort of uh, subtle uh, indentations around certain bolts. Um, so yeah, that's that'll be the next part. So I'll see you soon. Okay, so to make these bolts look a bit more a bit more realistic. Um, I'm gonna be adding the um, a really subtle indentation around them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, go over to our kit patch area here and create a new layer, move it below uh, everything else, and I'll take a brush around uh, this size. Actually, I'll make it white, like so, and I'll simply convert it to a normal. Next, I need to change the slant to uh, down. There we go. And I'll increase the softness. Let's see here. I'll try and change it to stroke outer. There we go. Increase the size a bit. Try stroke inner instead. Nope. Just gonna toggle, toggle between these and see which uh, works best. This one works really well. So I'm going to decrease the contrast, make it a lot more subtle, and also the opacity. There we go. Really, really, really subtle. And change the blending mode to overlay. There we go. So now I'm going to take this using sculpt mode and just move it around the uh, different bolts. There we go. So I'll go out of sculpt mode and I want to preview it. Looks really, really good. And just like I said, just really, really subtle details to make it look a bit more grounded. In this part, we'll go over how to use shapes to create normals, using the sculpt mode to edit normals and create new shapes, and creating normals using the text tool. All right, so the next detail I'm gonna add is, um, are the, um, the uh, crosses and uh, on this side of the uh, receiver. So I'm pulling up this reference here and 
So there's like one Y, there's one V, and there's one X. Uh, but I'm gonna be making the X first, and I'll just um, show you some tricks here. So I just need to find the correct area. Or actually, I don't need to do that first, but so let's choose the rounded rectangle tool and set the radius to, I think this will work fine, to around 20. And I'll rotate this and just duplicate it and rotate it the other way around as well, like so. And then I'll just merge them together. And so you don't need to rasterize because you, you can use shapes uh, to convert to normals. But in this case, I want to rasterize just because there's no point in having it uh, as a shape because I'm happy with how it looks. So I'll convert it. And if we look at this reference here, um, the, the inside of it is quite sharp, but the outside is rounded. So I'm going to try and uh, recreate that look by going um, looking through the bevels and the um, curves. So first I'm going to change it to down and increase the, um, the size a bit. And also, I uh, can't forget to zip the previous one and rename it as well, so we keep a good layer structure. So I'm just right-clicking here and I'm going to type uh, indent, oops, indent. There we go. So going up one level and I'm going to change the bevel type. Just zoom in a bit to make it easier to see. Softness. Yep, that kind of looks exactly like what I want. Increase the softness quite a bit more. Yep, there we go. Yep, there we go. Awesome. And I'm, I'm noticing it's a bit too uh, thick. So I'm just going to go in here, uh, go into sculpt mode, and I'm going to select the, um, use control click here to get the shape. I'm going to select, modify, and contract. So I'm going to contract it with uh, maybe three pixels. Select invert, select inverse, and delete. Can make it a bit thinner. So uh, since we were inverted, I'm going to choose expand instead by two pixels. Actually, three pixels or four, maybe. So expand four. There we go. And delete. So that's better. So let's preview and see if we got the right dimensions. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to once again decrease the um, contrast. Maybe a bit less. And change the blending mode to overlay. And now I need to find the correct uh, correct place to place them. So I'm just dragging it over here. And I think it's... Where can it be? Okay, so check the reference photo. So this one is like over here by the trigger almost. Make it a bit smaller. A bit further up. There we go. Okay, so let's just uh, click the refresh button here to force the previewer to refresh. Looks right. And I'm noticing it, I'm still not um, happy with the thickness of it. So I'm going to go in sculpt mode again. Select and, um, and delete or, or shrink the selection. So contract three pixels and delete and I'm also gonna decrease the size because I think it's it might be a bit too uh, deep so drag this down to around uh, 20 and also decrease the depth a bit there we go so that's better all right so the um, the bevel type on these two are really similar to this one. So I'm going to use this 
um, this detail, this normal, to um, create the other ones as well. So I'll start off by creating um, this one. So I'll just go into sculpt mode. And I'll select the detail here and just drag it down here. So what I can do now is I can just deselect this bottom part like so. Actually, I can decrease even further because there's a bit of a jagged area here. There we go. And seeing as the bottom part of it is covered by a bolt, I don't need to make sure this um, the um, this looks right. There we go. Just make sure it's directly above, above the trigger. Okay, so I'll just zoom out here and try and locate. And da -da -da -da. over here. So yeah, back in sculpt mode again, and I'll just uh, move this. Move this to the right spot. And um, gotta make sure I got enough room for the bolt, which is gonna go uh, down here. And I need to rotate it slightly to make it follow the angle of the um, receiver here. There we go. Deselect and go into sculpt mode. Go out of sculpt mode, I mean. And let's. F yeah. Looks about right. Okay, so the last one is a, um, lo looks like a Y almost. So I'll go back into sculpt mode. Back and forth into sculpt mode. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna select this and I'll just move it over here. Okay, so I'm gonna try and, gonna try and rebuild uh, build the Y shape here by selecting this one here. and move it out or duplicate it and I'll just rotate oops Let's see and there we go just place it in the right spot deselect and just clean up Uh, using white color to fill this area in and using the um, oops, that was using the um, eraser to remove this excess uh, part here and make sure I use a hard brush so I don't delete anything by mistake there we go and I'll need to make this I need to move these um, towards each other a bit more like so there we go and just take this one as well move this in there we go okay so let's go out of sculpt mode and see what it looks like Awesome. Okay, so once again, gonna go in sculpt mode, and I'll make this uh, a bit thinner because I, th I think yeah, it's both both uh, smaller and a bit thinner. So select and make sure to deselect the. Um, or actually, I can just yeah. There we go. And select and contract by let's see five. Or, yeah, maybe three is fine. Three, and. Select inverse and delete. Oops, my bad. I gotta select these as well so I don't delete them. There we go. Okay, so I'll just make it a bit smaller. And I'll move it up slightly. Also, one thing that you can do if you want um, one of these to be a bit uh, a bit more subtle, uh, because I th this is a bit this isn't as um, accentuated as the other ones. So I'll just go in here and deselect, and I'll use the eraser tool um, at a lower at a pretty low uh, opacity, and I'll start erasing. Okay, 
Let's see what it did. Yeah. Try it again. Make it a bit bigger. There we go. And once more. And just go out of sculpt mode. There we go. So let's see. That's good. But I think... I liked it better when it wasn't um, when I didn't erase. So I'll just go back and undo those two um, um, eraser tools. There we go. Perfect. I'll also decrease the size to around um, eighteen. I'll make these two a bit smaller. So as you see, um, as you can see, it's really really easy to um, modify and change details using the um, the sculpt mode instead of uh, creating new layers, new details uh, with unique settings for each. So I'll just make this a bit smaller. And the same thing with the other one as well. Perfect. All right, so I'll take the um, these uh, low bolts that I created before, and I'll place them uh, over the um, the shapes I just did. So find the low bolt after we rename this to crosses. I don't know uh, suiting name, and just go up one layer, and go into sculpt mode once again. It's my favorite tool. As you might have noticed. All right, so select this. And just alt drag it to here, make it a bit bigger to make it almost uh, almost touch the um, the edge down there. And duplicate it to here. There we go. And go out of sculpt mode. And I'm actually noticing I chose the wrong uh, bevel type here because, as you can see here, the uh, bevel type I selected has is um, transparent around this um, around the um, uh, top part of it and the uh, outside ring. So I have to fix this. I'm gonna try using the regular emboss, and that actually works pretty well. So I'm gonna go with this one. And let's preview. So this one back here looks good. I just need to make this one in the middle a bit bigger. So in sculpt mode again, select it and just scale it up like so. And out of sculpt mode. There we go. Right, so the sides of the receiver is starting to look um, pretty much done. So I'm just going to check my reference photo again. And I'm noticing there is one piece I haven't, um, one detail I haven't done yet. And it's this, um, this part around the small low bolt we made here. So I'm just going to make a um, detail that is unique for this, uh, this part. I usually don't, don't like to create unique details like this, but sometimes you have to. So creating a brush around the same size as this one and click it out. Make sure it's beneath the uh, detail we're trying to uh, work with. And I'm just going to convert it and change the uh, slant to down once again. And I think stroke and boss is going to work pretty well here. Actually going to make it a bit bigger. There we go. And increase the softness. Maybe a bit too much. There we go. And also decrease the contrast slightly. And there we go. Might be a bit too small still. So gonna make it just gonna size it up slightly. And 
and decrease the softness by one step and also the size to around two and I'm gonna load my mesh again sometimes when working with uh, really high uh, big textures it um, can reset to the uh, uh, default previewer perfect all right, so the next detail I'm going to add now is um, the uh, uh, kind of striped uh, detail to the magazine, which I'm going to be creating using a similar similar technique um, as used for the crosses here. So let's just find my way here and select this one. And since the uh, magazine is UV mapped straight, uh, it allows me to uh, really easily create this detail. So I want this to be around this this high, and once again, I'm gonna duplicate it because I want three stripes. And yeah, this um, this magazine isn't actually a um, real magazine. It's just I've just taken elements uh, from different magazines for the AKs that I like and made my own own one. So. Um, I just really like these stripes. They add a, it's a really cool design element. And just make sure they align properly with the um, with the um, part above it. And there we go. Okay, so I'll just merge these together and raise the eyes. There we go. And next, just click convert. So yeah, this this is a really really basic uh, detail. So I'm just gonna basically increase the size and increase the softness of it. So I'm gonna try around seven, and then increase the softness to around midway here. Maybe even a bit more. And then increase the size to uh, nine or ten, and increase the softness. And I'm also gonna decrease the contrast once again and change the blending mode to overlay. If there are some slight uh, variations or so gradients in the underlying normal. And there we go. So let's preview. Perfect. All right, so I'm notice, um, I want this bottom part here to align with the um, angle. So the way I'm gonna go about this, you know, doing this, is to go into sculpt mode. Surprise again! <laughs> Just gonna change the name of this to Magazine Stripes. <clears throat> go into sculpt mode, and now I'm going to um, use a trick that I um, use all the time. So I'm selecting a part here, and simply just moving. It upwards like so using the arrow keys and same thing with this one there we go so let's see what it looks like there we go and they're a bit too far um, too far down so once again in sculpt mode and I'll select the bottom part here just like I did before but this time I'm gonna select all of them at the same time and just uh, move them up like so and out of sculpt mode and refresh there we go perfect next there's a detail that's really similar to the um, uh, crosses we made just before but it's got a slightly different kind of bevel so i'm, I'm going to show you on the reference it's this really um, deep um What's it called? Like indentation. So I'm gonna use the rounded rectangle shape again, and I'm gonna increase the radius to around uh, 40. So let's just drag this out and actually increase it to 50, because it's supposed to be entirely round. So maybe something like this. Yep. And I'm gonna raise the rise, put it at the top, and convert it to a normal and it's going down so we're gonna change the slant to down once again 
increase the size quite a bit, like so, and increase the softness, I think, all the way up, actually. And I'm going to try using the, um, the stroke emboss. And once again, increase the size even more. I'm just gonna try the different uh, different sorts here, the, uh, different bevels here. See what I like the most. I think this one is the best. And just for fun, let's uh, see what the different uh, curves do. If there's one that uh, works better. This one's pretty good. And I'm noticing it's way too big. There we go, and just for us refresh. I think this this is really good actually. So I'm gonna move this back a little bit. So around here, refresh. There we go. There we go. Okay. So and it's gonna be the same on the other side as well. Let me just find a better reference. Yep. So let's just go into sculpt mode. Select it and just move it across here around here I think yep and out of sculpt mode there we go okay so let's just quickly change the blending mode to overlay and decrease the contrast a little bit to around 75% or something there we go great okay so uh, next thing I'm gonna show you is um, text to normal which will be the next part, so I'll see you in a second. Right, so one good way to add text to, um, uh, to a model is to go into text, the text tool, and use the horizontal type mask tool. So I have some text here on my, um, in my reference uh, here. So I'm gonna go here and just t uh, try and type in uh, what it says, so zero, three, Nine nine, and I'm gonna try and find a um, a good text for it, or type font. So I think this, this Arial might work. So uh, select this or accept this and convert the selection to normal. And just just like always, um, change the slant to uh, whatever whatever um, slant you want and uh, the bevel to uh, the bevel you want. And I'm gonna enable anti-aliasing for this because there's uh, quite a few curves in it. So if we just zoom in here, I can show you what, uh, what it does. It's a very subtle uh, change, but it, it just makes it uh, a lot smoother. So I'm gonna place this in the correct area or in the correct place, which is up here. Just gonna make, make it a bit smaller and also make sure it has the correct alignment. So there we go. So now if I go into sculpt mode, I can simply add more text using the uh, mask tool or path, may I type mask tool, yeah. So type here, uh, let's see, cm030.2. And accept this and just fill it with white. So now I'm going to place this, select this, and place it where I want it, make it a bit smaller, and also rotate it so it aligns properly. Place it around here, and go out of sculpt mode, and let's see what it looks like. So it's a bit too big, so I'll just go into sculpt mode again. Select it and scale it down like this and out of sculpt mode again. Just make sure it's refre refreshed. Yep, and there we go. Looks good. And there's some text on the other side as well. So let's go back here and find the proper side. There we go. So let's find the correct area for it. 
and uh, I'm gonna be using the same uh, layer because I like the bevel I got. So over here. So nine three and use some random numbers like four two. That's perfect. And go out of scope mode. So now we have a selection. So I'll um, let's see here. Actually, I need to go into sculpt mode first. That was my bad. So sculpt mode. And I will just type it again. 93. And just some random numbers. Like so. And just fill it with white. There we go. And now I'm going to rotate it and align it to the um, this part here. There we go. And I'll just move it down a bit because we I want to add um, I'm not sure if you saw it but there's a star here which I'm going to be creating real soon so I went out of sculpt mode because I was happy with how it looked so now I'm gonna be creating the um, the star the shape so the um, way I'm gonna do this is I'm going to go to the uh, shape tool and choose polygon tool and I'm gonna set it to five sides and I'll just drag the shape out here and try to align it with how it's going to be, be placed. So now I'm pressing convert um, convert shape to normal. And there we go. Okay, so I'm going to be using a bevel type that I haven't used before, which is called uh, groove. And just like, it, uh, like the title says, it creates a groove around the shape. So I'll just scale this down and place it where I want it. One great thing about Endo 2 is that you can rotate anything you create and, and it will still retain the proper tangents. Something like this. And I'm going to change it to um, overlay. And I'm also going to enable anti-aliasing because it has quite a few angles in it. So I'm going to do the same thing with the text. I'm going to change it to overlay. And I'm also going to zip to save some um, memory. And I'm gonna, uh, yeah, this one is zipped as well. So I just need to rename it to star. Let's just preview it to see what it looks like. Perfect. So now we're pretty much done with the entire receiver. So we're gonna move on to one of the most interesting parts, which is um, gonna be the handle, in which I'm, um, I'll be using uh, Endo2's photo normal generation tools or functions. So I'll see you in a second. In this part, we'll go over how to convert a photo to a believable normal. And we'll also go over what you can do with curves. Okay, so the first thing I need to do to get started with the uh, creating the uh, wooden feel for the uh, grip is finding a good texture. So I got one here in uh, Chrome. It's uh, really it's really high res and it's pretty much the same, the correct color and it has um, a good amount of believable wear and tear. So I'm going to take this, copy it and paste it into um, into my document here. So the first thing I'm going to do is size it and place it in the correct areas. So I I don't want too much of the um, of the wear and tear. I just want a small bit of it. So I'm going to scale it and size it so I get the areas of it that I like. And I'm going to try and get the, um, the um, wavy bits here uh, somewhere in the middle. So I think this looks really good. I'll get the transparency up again. Or, or opacity up, um, uh, I mean. So I'll duplicate this and I'll place this at the uh, bottom here as well. Actually, I'll delete this and just paste the original one. Just move this around. Get it all the way down here. Like so. And I'll just decrease the opacity so I can um, delete it in the uh, parts where, it's, um, where it shouldn't be visible. So I'll use the polygonal marquee tool. Just really roughly just uh, select, like outline it.
There we go. And select inverse. And get the opacity up again and merge them. So I'll, what I'll do with, it, um, do with this is I'll just uh, right click, duplicate layer and duplicate to a new document, which I'll save as um, tutorial bake uh, grip. So this means I can take this and plug it into Dedo later. So I'll just save this, close it down, and I will, um, let's see, move this up so I can see the uh, color range. Next, I'll go to image, adjustment, and let's see, I'm trying to find black and white. There we go. So I'm gonna tweak, tweak these values so I get, um, so I'll get a um, pretty even, evenly distributed um, range. So I don't want the um, the grains of the wood to stand out as much as the um, as the um, wear and tear and scratches and so on. So trying to find one that eliminates the um, uh, wood rings as much as possible. Just scrolling through this list here. Pretty happy with how this one and how this looks. So as, as you can see, we the grains are pretty pretty toned down, whereas the um, the scratches and wear is uh, pretty prominent. So now that we have this, I'm gonna move this uh, down again. And I'm gonna first save and then convert. So as you can see, we we got some details here, but it's really undefined and it's just it's just a blob of details. So I'm gonna go in here and um, see if I can create a more realistic uh, wood texture or wood normal. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the bevel type. See if I can get some, because the first thing I wanna do is I just want the grains to pop out. Okay, so I'm gonna go with um, uh, outer and I'm gonna be tweaking the, um, the um, different uh, parameters here. Just gonna wait for um, wait for it to um, merge layers. So I'm gonna disable the previewer for now, so I can work faster. So change it to outer, and I'm gonna toggle the fall off. Okay, so this looks pretty good actually. So I'm gonna change the blending mode to overlay and decrease the contrast. Because the way I'm gonna be approaching this is I'm gonna be layering a bunch of, um, a bunch of details together so that I, um, so yeah, I mean, so, so it just became, becomes really defined, not just a blob, a mess of blobby details. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to uh, group this. Um, let's name this um, wood Oops, wood grain. So I'm gonna group this by um, selecting it and pressing Control G, naming this grip. So next I'm gonna um, select the wood grain group, go to um, edit and duplicate. And this will be named um, chips. So. Now that I have a duplicated version, I can um, just layer this on top of the pre uh, previous one and I can change the bevel mode. So I'm gonna try use inner and increase the depth and contrast. And also gonna play around with the plane fill. So the inner one doesn't work really well, so I'm gonna change it to outer. So as you can see, uh, already now I'm getting uh, I'm getting rid of the um, a lot of the wood grain and instead getting the chips here, which is, which, is, which is just what I want to do. So tweak the plane fill again to get more of those nice little cracks, dents. Easy does it. There we go. So I'm going to try and play around with the curves here. See if I can get a cool result. 
That's pretty cool. But I want to decrease the depth quite a bit. And also the contrast. So as you can see, this is still overlay since I just duplicated the previous one. And if I toggle this on and off, you can see what the, the, the changes I, I just did. I made a few of the details pop out a bit more. And let's preview it. As you can see, it's a really, really subtle, nice detail. Move the light around a bit. I might increase the um, the contrast of the bottom um, underlying layer just a little bit to around 55 maybe. There we go. Looks really good. So I want the, um, I'm going to duplicate the wood grain one and um, just like before, go to edit and duplicate. Because I want the the heavy wood grains, like the, some of the heavier wood grains, to pop out a bit more. So I'll name this heavy grains. And I will increase the contrast of it. Like so. And also increase the depth a little bit so we, we can easier, easy, uh, more easily see what, what we're doing. So play around with the plane fill. Or fall off, I mean. And try some different curves. I really recommend you trying um, just playing around r around with the curves because you can achieve some pretty cool results using it. Okay, so this looks pretty cool. I'm gonna change the slant to down. And play around with the fall off again. All right, so it didn't work out exactly as I planned, so I'm going to try a different a different curve. This is a lot better. Okay, so decrease the depth. Just toggle it on and off to see the difference. Perfect. And decrease the contrast to around 70%. There we go. Okay, so let's preview. There we go. That's perfect. Perfect, okay. So, now that this is done, we are almost ready to move on to baking the AO. But before we move on, I want to show you a cool, uh, have a couple of cool things. Uh, first of all, I want, I'm going to um, I'm going to add some tape to the uh, clip here, and some patterns for the grip. I'm also going to be um, showing you how to use the sculpt mode to uh, add some dents and uh, irregularities to the uh, surface, without going into a, a program like ZBrush to just um, yeah just add stuff like that. So this is a real time saver, and um, I'll be going over this in a second, so I'll see you soon. All right, so the first thing I'm going to uh, be creating is the um, pattern on the grip back, back here. And uh, I'm going to be demonstrating the pattern to normal uh, feature. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be creating the actual pattern we'll be using. So I'll just um, cre create a new document, uh, 512 times 512, create a new layer. And I'll place a square. And then I'll rotate this 45 degrees, place it where I want it. And I'll just uh, duplicate it up a few times to make it um, to fill the entire row here. And one more time. There we go. Next, I'm just going to make sure that the middle of this one will meet up with the middle of this one. Just transform like so. 
Okay, so we have one row. Let's make the next one, and from there is just easy sail, easy sailing. There we go. Noticing a slight offset down here. There we go. Okay, so now I'll take these and just duplicate them up to fill the entire document. And there we go. All right, so to test, uh, to make sure this tiles, I'll just uh, make a uh, copy, uh, select all, copy, and paste into a new layer, and use filter other offsets. And I'm noticing that it doesn't tile perfectly, so I'm just gonna go back and see what I'm doing wrong. And I noticed down here that, we got a, or up and down, that we got an issue. There we go. And there we go. Might just tweak this slightly. There we go. There we go. Okay. So once again, copy all and paste. And go to filter other offset. So now it tiles properly. And what I'll do next is I'll just um, select this go to edit and define pattern and I'll name this um, actually I forgot one thing and uh, we need to scale it down in the width to around 50% to make it look more like a diamond pattern instead of just uh, uh, squares so copy this over there we go now we can go to edit and define pattern I'll name this diamond grip okay so in here I'll just make a quick selection and uh, set a new layer as well and just find the grip here it is okay so I'll try and get the selection right up here and up there okay so I'll fill this layer with a white color and just double click to go into the um, layer styles next I'll go to pattern overlay and I'll just browse to my pattern I just created here and now I can set the scale I want these to be pretty small so I'll just keep scaling them down I think this looks pretty good. There we go. And I'll just copy this and merge these together so I get a um, rasterized layer and then just invert the colors. So we get a white, uh, so the diamonds are actually white. And once this is done, I will simply click convert shape to normal. There we go. And this looks pretty good uh, out, of, out of the box, but I'll I just want to preview it on the actual model first. And just right click, custom mesh, and there we go. Yep, so that's pretty, pretty good. I'll just, I'm just noticing the angle down here is a bit off. So actually it's not, it's wrong back here. So I'll just select, go into sculpt mode and select from um, up here. Go to the select tool and just make a selection to around here and delete. And out of sculpt mode. There we go. Perfect. I might just move it back a few notches. All right, so the next thing I want to add is um, like an edge or a lip around this to make it look kind of inset instead of just, um, yeah, etched on top of it. So change the uh, blending mode to overlay to make it follow the curvature of the underlying geometry a bit more. There we go, and decrease the contrast. 
Uh, what I'll do next is I'll um, I'll toggle the preview off, and I'll just make a selection here. So use the polygonal marquee tool, and just follow the rough outline. And up here. So I'll place this below the um, diamond pattern, fill it with the white color. And seeing as the uh, diamond pattern is an overlay, uh, I see the pattern, uh, the selection below it. So don't worry about that. And I'll change to outer. And make make it a bit a bit bigger. So I'll go into sculpt mode, and make a selection, and just ex um, expand the selection by let's see eight, and fill it. There we go. So out of sculpt mode again. Okay. So I'll make it a bit bigger to around four, three. There we go. Maybe I'll try one more up to five. Actually, I like this better. So once again, I'll go into sculpt mode, make a selection and expand the selection by four pixels and just fill it with a white color. And seeing as I want this to be like a lip around it, I'll go back into uh, select modify and do a contract with around 10 pixels and then just delete. So there we go. And this means I should reduce the size a little bit and I'll just, I'll just sculpt mode. And remember, you can change the parameters even when you're in uh, sculpt mode, which I just did now. So I'll go into blending, blend and choose overlay. There we go. And I'll just increase the softness to around three or two and reduce the contrast a little bit. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And I'll preview. And there we go. All right, so the next, uh, next part I will show you is, the, um, is how to use the sculpting mode to uh, add uh, imperfections, dents, scratches, and so on to the uh, uh, receiver back here. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, so in this part, I'll be giving you an introduction to the sculpting tool with which we'll be adding bumps and dents and some other cool details. All right, so here's one of, one of my favorite parts when it comes to uh, Endo 2. And it's the ability to actually sculpt and deform in a really organic and dynamic way. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll just uh, create a new layer, blank layer, and convert it to a normal. So this means it's um, completely empty and whatever I paint now will be, um, will be uh, added as a detail, normal. So I just went into sculpt mode after generating and uh, I got the brush tool selected. So now I can, I can go in here and start painting. So I'll select a soft brush, pretty big. And I'll also decrease the opacity by quite a bit to around maybe 35 and re reduce the flow as well to 50. That's a real nice subtle effect. Just zoom in to 100%. As you can see here, it's a very nice soft detail. So what I'll do now is I'll simply paint some and change the slant to down. I'll try and get the um, get the look the way I want it to. So I'll also increase the softness and change it to overlay. So now that now that this is done, I'll just go ahead and um, delete what I just painted. And I'll go in and start painting some details. So first of all, I want to add some subtle uh, irregular, irregular, sorry, ir irregularities to the um, edges here, where it's uh, pretty likely to get uh, uh, bumped. So I'll be toggling between the um, the eraser tool and the brush tool. 
So same here, I'll reduce this to around 50%. And I can go in and start just tweaking. I want some down here as well by the uh, trigger. Make it go up here a bit. And I also want to add some smaller details. And I'll go in and soften them up a bit. I just want some really subtle um, surface details. So let's just wait for it to um, refresh here. Let me just find where I was working. There we go. So I got some really nice small details here. And I'll actually make this even more subtle. And I'll go in and add some bumps to the um, to the top part. Yeah, I want to add some more. And I'll try and focus on this part here. There we go. Very subtle. And I want to add some up here as well. Let's see. Some around here. And I'll also increase the, um, or try and change to emboss and see what it looks like. So that's a bit too, bit too extreme. So I'll just go back to inner instead. Perfect. And I want some up here as well. So being able to do this immediately in Photoshop is really, uh, really a big time saver. Instead of going into, like I said before, going into a sculpting program and um, having to first export, import, add the details, then bake. Uh, and just being able to sculpt directly in, in Photoshop is a, is a really, really powerful thing. So I'll go ahead and start adding some details on this side as well. So we got some, got a really cool bump up here. These are really, really small details that I think really help sell the story. That it's um, it's a it's a used weapon, but not abused. So um, I'll just add some really, really small details to another uh, a couple of more places. For example, on the magazine, and maybe one on here in the back as well. There we go. And. You don't you don't need to use the uh, default brushes. You can use anything you like. You can choose uh, like a grunge brush here, add details. Um, you can also just like usual. You can just uh, make a selection. You can fill it like so. So seeing as Endo Two uh, utilizes Photoshop's functions, you can the possibilities are pretty much endless. So I'm getting pretty happy with the um, amount of bumps and dents. So I'll actually I'll add a couple more down here by the uh, grip on this side. Use a soft brush again. And I'll just go in here and there we go. Make it a bit softer. There we go. And other sculpt mode. Really, really subtle. I might go in and uh, make it a bit um, heavier. There we go, perfect. Okay, so before we move on, there's just one thing I like to add, and that's uh, a really cool trick um, to create uh, a welding pattern. 
And this is really simple. Uh, all you need to do is uh, to create a new layer, to use the brush tool, and go into the brush settings. I'll close the previewer for now. So the only thing you need to do is to go into brush chip tape, uh, brush chip shape, I mean, and uh, increase the spacing to around 50, 55%, and the hardness to between 30 and 40. Next, go into shape dynamics and increase the size jitter to between 40 and 60. And the, um, let's see here, roundness jitter to around between 10 and 15. Uh, you also need to change the hardness to 38 or so and close it down and simply uh, make a brush stroke. I'll make it here to make it look like the hinge has been welded like so and convert brush to normal. So seeing as we added some hardness to the brush, we get uh, we get like a cutoff peak on it. And this is really good because it adds some, uh, some sort of separation between the um, uh, brushes. So I'll increase the softness to around six, I think, will work well. Maybe eight. And you can also play around with the fall off. It produces uh, quite different results. Like if you want more separation, just uh, decrease it, and if you want to make it more like blobby, um, increase it. And um, so yeah, let's preview. And it should end up here. There we go. All right, so I'll simply go into sculpt mode, which uh, will allow us to um, um, more or less use uh, use this brush as an alpha in um, in um, ZBrush or Mudbox or similar programs. So I'll just find the hinge, which is here, with a nice <laughs> normal error. So just use a brush, like usual, and just paint here. And out of sculpt mode. And let it preview. And there we go. I might move this a bit to the left to make it um, um, intersect better with the, pre with the previous one. And the same thing with the uh, first one. Just move this down a bit. There we go. And just let it preview. Perfect. So yeah, now that you have the um, this uh, welding welding uh, detail, you can uh, just go in and add welding um, wherever you want using the uh, sculpt and brush tool. So yeah, let's move on to the next part. All right, so the last detail I want to add is the um, are the um, bits of tape on the magazine. It's a it's a pretty cliche uh, detail to add, but I I really think it adds some um, nice. Um, I mean, it breaks up the lines here pretty well and adds some interest. So um, that's the next part. So I'll see you soon. Okay, so in this part we'll be adding the final touches and generating AO, and I'll be showing you how to copy and paste settings deforming existing details with sculpt mode, and editing previously made details as well as generating the ambient occlusion map. Okay, so now it's time for um, uh, time to add the final details to the um, normal map. And the first thing I want to do is add the tape I was talking about. And this is a really simple detail to add. All you need to do is make a selection here, and just use the um, uh, rectangular marquee tool. And I'll make a selection like this. Create a new layer, fill it with a white color, and then just uh, duplicate this down here. Drag it down here to around this part here because I want I want the um, bottom part of the uh, these stripes here to show, and you just have to make sure it actually reaches all the way across to the other side, so we don't get a gap between the um, tape parts. Not that it would really matter because tape has to end and start somewhere, but I think it would be too obvious that it's a um, seam to make it end uh, over there. So once it's done, I'll just merge these together and make sure it's brush to normal and convert. There we go. And <clears throat> I want this to look kind of like hockey tape. So I'm going to increase, so uh, it needs to be a bit thicker. So I'll add, increase the size to around five and also increase the softness. 
And in case you don't know what hockey tape is, it's basically the um, it's a kind of tape that you add to, for example, hockey clubs, uh, things uh, where you need uh, good grip, durable, thick um, tape. So this looks pretty good, and I'll just preview this and see what it looks like. Looks good, and the normal is just inverted here. It's not going to be a, um, be an issue in the engine. So this looks pretty good. Uh, and I want these to be, I want it to be a more layered look. So what I'll do is I'll name this tape one, and I'll simply duplicate this layer by going into edit and duplicate. And I'll name this tape two. So what I'll do, what I'll do now is I go into sculpt mode make a selection and set the pivot point to around here to make it uh, rotate around this point, rotate it up a bit and maybe move it up slightly. There we go. Deselect and do the same thing with this one, except I'll move the pivot point to around this part this time and just rotate and move it down slightly, even more rotation, there we go, and I'll just go out of sculpt mode. So now it covers up the all of the underlying uh, details here, so I'll simply go into opacity and choose like maybe 90, like so, and I'll also decrease the contrast slightly, just a little bit. And this didn't apply to the underlying tape here. So what I'll do now, instead of going into the underlying layer, I'll simply click copy settings and go down one to tape number one and paste settings. There we go. So now we can see the underlying details here uh, a little bit. So I'll just preview this and see what it looks like. It looks perfect. All right. So to make this look a bit more like tape, I want to go into um, sculpt mode once again and enter mode. And I'm going to use the eraser tool, uh, soft brush and reduce the opacity quite a bit, like so. And I'll just make a, a, a click here and hold down shift and click over here to make a straight line between, sto between those two points. And I'll go out of sculpt mode and see what it looks like. So that's a bit too extreme. So I'll just uh, undo. All right, so I'm back in sculpt mode and I'll undo once again to get rid of the, um, of the line here. There we go. And I'll decre decrease the opacity uh, even more. And I'll do the same thing again. Just click here, hold down shift, and drag it over here, or click over here. There we go. And I can even go in here and like add, add some irregularities. Like so. And I can even go into warp and add some slight add some slight um, bends to it, like so. And I'll do, do the same thing over here. Just hold down the, uh, uh, check the eraser tool and simply shift click over here. And I'll go in here, use the br uh, brush tool again. There we go. And maybe some over here as well. There we go, and go out of sculpt mode and see what it, look, what it looks like. Preview. There we go. That looks awesome. All right, so I'd say the tape is done now, and I just want to make a couple more changes. I'm, um, I'm thinking these uh, indentations here, like the um, uh, inset parts here, are a bit too weak. 
So what I'll do is I'll go here and find the bolt that I'm looking for. I think it's subtle indent. Just toggle on and off, see if it's, yep, that's the one. I'll increase the size to, let's see, four, three or four maybe. There we go. Because I, I want these to be visible even if you're not re looking straight at it. And let's preview. There we go, pops out a lot more. And I wanna do the same thing with the um, low bolt. The low bolts are really, really um, thin in the reference, but I'm noticing that they're, they're not really popping out, they're not very interesting at the moment, so I'm, I'm actually gonna ignore the reference for now and just, um, just make sure they look good. So same thing here, I'm going to increase the size quite dramatically to six, I think. I think. There we go, and let's see what it looks like. Even more. Gonna try eight. There we go. It's much better. Just for fun, I'm going to try and increase them to 12, just to see an extreme. Yep, gonna go with that. So this is one of the really good things about uh, working with Endo 2, instead of using floaters, for example. Using floaters is a really, really uh, good way of uh, adding details quickly without having to uh, worry too much about the um, topology. But being able to go in and change these whenever you want, uh, non-destructively is really, really nice and it saves a lot of time without having to go into the 3D program, change them, rebake and so on. So I can really recommend using this workflow if, uh, if it's your cup of tea. I personally love it. So with those changes made, I think I'm actually happy with the, um, with the normal map. I think it looks really, really good. And there's a real big difference between how it looked when I first uh, imported it and how it looks now. So, um, yeah, I'll see you soon. Okay, so now that the normal map is uh, where I want it to be, it's time to create the aim and occlusion map that I am uh, going to um, multiply or combine with the baked AO that I uh, generated in XNormal previously. So the way, to, the way to do this is simply go to the Endo2 window and convert, and you get a new window here. And in here, you have a bunch of different options um, that you can convert your normal map to. AO, height all around, height for a hard surface, diffuse, specular, and cavity. You can also go in here, cavity, and convert cavity to the different, um, different maps, and even to a normal map. And you can use a height map to gener generate AO, diffuse, specular, cavity, and normal here as well. But for now, I want to be in normal, since it's a normal map, we're gonna con convert to an AO. So select this, and you can also control click to select um, more maps, so you can batch render. But I just want AO for now. I'll make sure is tileable, is unchecked. I want 16 bit, and <clears throat> once I'm happy, I'll just click active doc for active document. You can also um, create a photo normal from a fo um, file, or from clipboard. But I'll click active doc now, and we're gonna get a new doc document here. Okay, so it looks pretty good from the get-go. So, and it's uh, already plugged into um, the previewer, as you can see. I can even uh, change the opacity of it. So you can preview, uh, preview in real time, and remove it from the uh, specular and so on. But I think it's it's got a bit too many um, uh, large shadows, so I'll decrease those. You can, um, you can um, adjust the fine, medium, and large shadows by using these sliders. So you can see these are the large shapes, which I do not want many of because I have, um, I have good information of that in the, in the baked version. And I'll also reduce the medium shadows slightly. So now we've got AO for the um, details we added in Endo 2. For example, the, um, these 
shapes here, which we didn't have, have before. So um, I think this adds a lot uh, of believability. And this is going to be a big helper when we um, move on to Didu in the next part. All right, so I think this looks pretty good. So what I'll, what I'll do now is I'll simply save this out. Save it as a TGA. And name it tutorial bake dash and do two dash occlusion. Save. And I don't want to comp compress it. And OK. And I'll close this down. So what I'll do now is I'll simply open the baked one. And I'll open the one from uh, Endo2. So I can hide the previewer, minimize this. So what I'll do now is I'll copy this, select all, copy, and paste onto this one. And here I'll select the Endo2 occlusion, change the blending mode to multiply. So as you can see, there's a big difference. You get all these wood details in the AO, you get all the bolts, you get all the, all the things we added. So there we go, we got a perfect AO. So save it as a TGA, tutorial bake, dash final, or actually combined. I never want to use the word final because it's never final. <laughs> Right, so tutorial bake combined occlusion dot TGA save and 24 bits since I don't have an um, alpha channel. Okay, save this out. No. And what I'll do now is I'll save this as TGA tutorial bake dash and do two dash normals dot TGA. And there we go. All right, so it's time to preview this in all its glory. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, so the final thing I want to show you is the before and after shot. So um, as you can see here, I'm in Marmosa Toolbag, and um, I got the material set up here with the baked um, occlusion and the baked normal. So this is before we added details, and this is after. So as you can see, there's a lot more fidelity and um, interesting, interesting uh, details in this one. And this took about uh, one and a half hours uh, with me explaining everything. And um, it would have been a lot faster if I, um, if I just uh, worked without uh, explaining uh, what I did. So um, I hope you can see this is a really viable uh, workflow. And I really hope you learned something. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. And remember to check back to see the next part in which we'll be texturing the AK using DDoo.